Hello, Strangers. It's episode five of Strangecast with me, Andre. And me, Kirsten. My lovely wife. This episode is called Fascinated by Cheese. So, with that out of the way, what's the topic of the day? So, we are going to be talking about uh, tips from the 1890s, uh, to start off with, about for wives, basically, for wives and how to keep your husband happy. And we thought maybe we would discuss if they're still relevant today, if I do any of them, or if you might like me to do some of them. I'm scared. And see what your opinions are. Okay. So I have not been prepped ahead of time. <laughs> no, you have not. This is like reacting to a YouTube video, but reacting to my wife reading out comments about wives. I mean, okay. Hit me. Okay. So first off we have, the secrets are to obey him, avoid nagging, do not spend any money on yourself, and do not let him catch you curling your hair. Wow. Yeah. Um, well, let me think. I haven't caught you curling your hair. <laughs> you never nag. And I demand that you spend money on you sometimes. And what about the obey him? Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I think it's quite an old-fashioned term, isn't it? In some um, marriage vows, they have the obey him. We removed that. We did. We did not have that. I don't like that term. It's not very modern thinking. No. So we didn't not. do that. Um, no. Yeah. I, I mean, it's weird. Like, I mean, I suppose these things are of their time, but that one is particularly sort of, uh, I don't know. It, it's very self-centered, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, remember at this time, it is all about the man. Yeah. The wives are just there to serve. Um, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So moving on, he does not want to hear any news of his mother-in-law, only about his own mother. Jeez, I like your mum. I know. No, that's rubbish. Yeah. No, your mum's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> do you know what? If, if, if she hears this, um, just remember I do love you. Okay? <laughs> it's all good. And you do listen if I have any news about her. Of course. Yeah. Um, so next, and this one does does make me laugh. And if he is lying in bed ill, for heaven's sake, do not fuss around him in a silk dress, else it will rustle and annoy him. <laughs> a silk dress? Silk dress. And <laughs> I didn't write this part down, but it was talking about if you were wearing a new silk dress it would have more sound and be more ruffly and that is why it would annoy him and aggravate him if he's lying in his sick bed well i'm going to take this a whole different direction and say that that's discrimination because as a blind husband i would like to know where you are in the room at all times yeah <laughs> all right so, so you'd actually like me to wear the silk you dress. can wear the silk dress okay it's good to know screw these people all right <laughs> Forget that. <laughs> um, next we have, don't sit up till he comes home from the club. Better be in bed and pretend to be asleep. If you must be awake, seem to be glad he came home early. He'll probably think you an idiot, but that's inevitable anyway. Jeez. Again, just like vile in a way. Mm -hmm. Again, it's of its time. I would never think. Why would you marry an idiot? Well, what is that's that? just what they do, isn't it? They... Marry a woman to look after them, take care. And they're in a spare. They're just there to look pretty, I suppose, and look after the house. It's amazing that men still exist and that they haven't been like burned off the tree <laughs> at all, to be honest. <laughs> Women, right? They birthed us, they brought us into this world. They cannot be idiots. And they can take us out. <laughs> well, exactly. Well, exactly. There you go. That's weird. So that's all I have from the 1890s. Right. Um, so we'll move on to the 1950s, which aren't drastically different, to be fair. 60 years later. <clears throat> yep. So, plan ahead, even the night before, to have a delicious meal on time. This is a way of letting him know that you have been thinking about him and are concerned about his needs. Most men are hungry when they come home, and the prospect of a good meal are part of a warm welcome needed. That's not terrible. And depending on the type of relationship you have, it might be something you'd do anyway. I remember coming back from Wales once. I walked into the house and I smelt freshly baked lemon cake. And it made me so happy because I was like, there's cake. 
<laughs> but that's you know me doing something nice for you it's not an expectation no 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 this is that... definitely talking about an expectation of always having a meal on the table and obviously that is in some relationships still very expected yeah no this is a totally different like yeah. understanding of that i make you a nice meal or a cake or whatever when you've been away as a nice welcome home because i want to do it not because you have asked i know, expected it when i got yeah, back where's my cake exactly <laughs> so it is it is different where's the foie gras <laughs> Um, so next is take 15 minutes to rest so you will be refreshed when he arrives. Touch up your makeup, put a ribbon in your hair and be fresh looking. He has just been with a lot of work weary people. Be a little gay and a little more interesting. His boring day may need a lift. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with that one. <laughs> I'm just happy with a hug and a kiss when I come home. That's fine. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. You don't want me to be a little more interesting? I don't know. You can be. <laughs> I feel like anything I say here would be digging a hole. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna talk about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> Next. At the time of his arrival, eliminate all noise of washer, dryer, dishwasher, or vacuum. Try to encourage the children to be quiet. Be happy to see him. Greet him with a warm smile and be glad to see him. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't like a silent house. No. It would not work for me. And as for the kids, they self-regulate these days anyway. They're like thermostats. Even when they were small, though, I don't think... No, they've never been I mean, there would be loud. times when I would say, you know, oh, that's very loud for daddy's ears. Just because you, you struggled with Alice. Do you remember when she went through the screaming phase? It was not like a boy scream, it was a girl little scream. Little girls. <laughs> and it yeah. was loud. The, the pitch. I know my brother was struggling with that with his baby. Yeah. I think they he, all go through it. It's learning the differences, you know, in tone of their voice and everything. But yeah. But other than that. We got through it. Yeah. I would never. Right, that's it. Washing machine off. Just flip the switch in the cupboard. Just kill it. Yeah. Nothing. You need a no silent sound. house. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. I can, actually couldn't think of anything worse. I'm a city boy, so there's always noise around me. Yeah. Even in a hotel, like, I need to make some noise. Like, I've got to have something. So, no, this doesn't work. <laughs> okay, and the last one I have for this section. Don't bother your husband with petty troubles and complaints when he comes home from work. Be a good listener. Let him tell you his troubles. Yours will seem trivial in comparison. Remember, your most important job is to build up and maintain his ego, which gets bruised plenty in business. Oh my god. This guy's a thin skinned idiot. <laughs> right? Never mind. Uh you know yeah. what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the episode of Upstart Crow that we watched some years ago. And he's was talking about all the delays on the heart, the horse and cart, but he made it sound like it was delays on the railways and all mm. the cancellations. Yes. That episode is very funny. I wish I could find it again. But do you remember watching that? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. That, that was really cool. And so that about him coming home and complaining about, I don't know, travel times or traffic jams, is exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Oh, God. So, yeah. No um, no discussing my troubles. Only no. yours. No. You're an idiot and you don't matter, remember? No, absolutely. Wow. And I am uninteresting. And a little not gay enough. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Why did I marry anyway? Yeah. <laughs> so... When I was researching for this and Googling and looking at all of these tips for wives, there were hundreds and thousands of um, things that popped up. Various articles from then to now, you know, loads of stuff. But I tried to find information for husbands about looking after their wives and how they should be. And it was so limited particularly from back then. Now you can, you know, find all sorts of things of how to be a good husband, how to listen properly, how to share the childcare duties, the household, you know, all of that, being a good partner as opposed to just a good husband. Mm -hmm. um, but I did find one, um, I think it was from a, a magazine um, article called A Husband's Guide to Maintaining a Happy Housewife in 1955. Ooh. So we'll 
go through these now. So my turn to be on the chopping block. <laughs> make sure that the wine refrigerator is stocked. If you get home before 5 p.m. and your beloved housewife is already drinking, don't judge her. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's I, okay. That's fine. I mean, it is before five, and I think that's a little bit crazy, but I'm not allowed to say anything. So <laughs> I'll just internalize that thought and carry on. Well, I mean, for us, it's different because I don't drink. So that would never be be a thing. I think if you were coming home every day, you would and drink. It was, <laughs> <laughs> and it was before five o'clock, and I was sat there with a glass of wine every single day. You might wonder if I was okay. I'd ask you if it was medicinal. True. <laughs> to begin with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's the a next, whole thing, isn't it? Yeah. The next, keep the toilet seat up. You are the man of the house, and after all. And this is your prerogative. Bollocks to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that wouldn't fly in this house. No, it would not. No way. No. It's gross anyway. No one needs to see that. No. Put it down. And I'd, I'd like anywhere I go, lid down. Yeah. And people come here and they leave it up. Actually annoys the crap out of me. <laughs> yes. I'm very, I'm very picky. No. Well, too right. Put it down. Yeah. Man's a fool. Carry on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Grooming is for girls. If you absolutely have to do any manner of personal grooming, keep the bathroom door locked at all times. You do not want your wife to think you have gone soft. Gone soft. So no shaving and no... What, I mean, what do they consider grooming? Plucking eyebrows? Shaving the old yeah. legs? I mean, <laughs> how many times are you shaving your legs? Oh, every, every, <laughs> about every five hours, I think. I've got a schedule going. Um... It's just the idea that anything, any grooming is for girls. So brushing your hair, all of those things, I would assume. So right. I guess the wife just thinks, well, you just wake up like this. Was born like that. You're, you know, freshly shaved face. Amazing. Trimmed hair, whatever it might be. I mean, it's not like I switch from using an expensive barber to using you to cut my hair, is it? <laughs> not at all. Save a hell of a lot of money. <laughs> yes. Wow. I, I am guess the I've barber gone soft. In this house. I've gone soft, everyone. Apparently so. Too bad. Well, it was nice knowing you. Can you imagine what they would think of um, Jake washing and creaming his his face, making sure that he's looking after his skin? And I know, right? Yeah. Awful. Soft before he's even 18. Mm -hmm. God, he ain't going to any, get anybody like that, is he? <laughs> Better tell him now. No. Okay, next. Ask your wife once a day how she is. She should always say she is fine. On the odd occasion, she does say she she does not say she is fine. Pretend you have not heard her and go and rearrange your stamp collection. Always be masterful in front of her and do not show any feelings. Feelings are dangerous things and don't solve anything. Okay, how are you? <clears throat> I'm fine. Great. <laughs> I don't have a stamp collection, so I'm going to get no. one. I'm going to get one just for this. Absolutely. So that when I do ask you and you're not fine, I shall rearrange it. I almost feel like this is probably the worst one. It's the stupidest. It is the or stupidest, but it's the worst one because we know that talking to your partner, especially when you've got any kind of problem or negative feelings or whatever it might be, is the only way to get through it. It's one of the greatest things you can do. Yeah. Because it doesn't just solve their problem. You might not even realize that you're feeling bad or... Um, Feeling bad because they're feeling bad. But it's, it's that bond as well. It solidifies that bond that you yeah. trust that other person, you know. And hopefully you love and respect them. Yeah. So together you can solve anything. Exactly. But even if it can't be solved, it's just the talking about it and that person listening to you. Um, and I think it's quite a man thing when I'm obviously you know, maybe being a bit judgy. But if a woman has a problem, usually I find men want to solve it. And so, you know, sometimes women just want to discuss things. They just want to get it out there. They just want to air it. They don't want you to come up with a solution. They just want you to listen. And usually they'll come to that solution themselves or usually they know what they need to do, but they just need to vent it out. And they just want their partner, their husband to listen to them. They don't need all the, well, you should just do this then from the husband they just want you to listen and that's incredibly important so saying oh, i'm just going to go and sort my stamp collection is, is avoiding the problem is not a good idea but also you're not being judgy because i do want to solve it 
I'm a troubleshooter at heart, so I like yeah. to solve things. And it annoys me if I can't solve it. It doesn't annoy me because you annoy me. It annoys me that I can't fix it. Mm. And I like to fix it. I'm a fixer. I know. So it, it bugs me. And then I think about it for ages. <laughs> but since but I sometimes a... you do. And sometimes that's what I need to hear. And we're, we're talking just about us. Yeah. You know, sometimes you, you do come up with the answer that I know needs to happen. But maybe in that moment, I'm not necessarily ready to hear that. And you will say whatever it might be, and I have to go away and think about it and realise that actually you were right. Life is weird like that. It's tough. And it's not always obvious or nice. And sometimes you have to be cruel to be nice, which doesn't seem like a sensible thing, but it's true. It's and, not uh, always being cruel. It's just being honest, isn't it? Factual. Factual. Yeah. You're right, though. Isn't it weird? This is like one of the biggest talking points we've had. Yeah. But I'm not going to rearrange. No. I, yeah. I like to solve when I can. I mean, anyone who knows me, I'm, I spend my days talking through groups on WhatsApp and things, trying to help people solve things. So if I can't, if I can solve other people's problems, I should be able to help solve yours. Yeah. Uh, can't always do it. But then you're there listening. Yeah, I do. I, I'm a good alone. listener, I think. You are. Definitely. Good to hear. So if we move on, now we talk about kids. Kids are little treasures, but are not really your responsibility from Monday to Friday. Ouch. Your wife should always have them tucked up in bed by the time you get back from work. But weekends are your chance to have some dad time. Get them to help you with dad jobs, such as washing the car, mowing the lawn and clearing the garden path. This will give your wife some child-free time to get the house ship shape and make a hearty roast dinner. <clears throat> well, I do like a hearty roast dinner. But <laughs> yes, you do. I go and chat to my kids as and when I like. So it's not just weekends. No, absolutely not. I think, you know, our situation is quite different in that when they were little, it would have been quite difficult for you to do a lot of the child care, you know, anything in terms, you know, other than sort of playing and interacting with them and stuff. But it certainly wasn't a case of, oh, I'll just see them on the weekends. <laughs> That's fine. It's like a kid custody battle. <clears throat> yeah. Joy. Um, I was talking to my friend Alison yesterday, and they're both blind parents. And so she was like, yeah, I would put them in the back carrier and go hiking. It's like, whoa. That's amazing. Yeah. Can't say I ever did that. No. But then we live in London, so... Yeah. Going up a huge mountain path is just sort of not on the agenda. No, no hiking here. No. Um. So with regards to the house... This uh -huh. is your wife's department, and she's very skilled at it. She was born to do it, after all. If she ever asks you to help with any domestic chores, then pretend you have not heard her and go and rearrange your stamp collection. This again? Yeah. Someone There's is obsessed. There's a lot about the stamp collection. It must have been a big thing in the 50s. Someone's obsessed with the stamps. <clears throat> yeah. And I have zero stamps. I guess I'm not a real man. So what would you think if I asked you to help me with a domestic chore? I would go out to the post office and buy a bunch of stamps. <laughs> no, I would do it. Good to know. I don't mind domesticity. No, I, I mean, I live here as well. I think it's very presumptuous of a man not to do anything house related. You yeah. live in it too. You just expect it to be there. Rubbish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kill it with fire. So the last point I have is try to relax as much as possible at home so as to make sure you have the energy to be a good, strong, reliable husband. Make sure your wife is happy in her domestic duties, buying her a new penny for each birthday and some marigolds for Christmas. And I just want to start off by saying if you ever buy me rubber gloves for Christmas, there will be serious trouble. Is that what that is? Yeah, marigolds are the what? rubber gloves that you I wear when cleaning and stuff. Mm. I thought marigold was a flower. Well, it is, but I am assuming in this context it's the rubber gloves because you've got the, yeah. the pinny, an apron. I didn't know that. For birthday and marigolds for Christmas. So I'm assuming that's the gloves. Well, I could have won by buying you flowers for Christmas. Yeah. And not gloves. You, you can do. I, okay. Fine. I, shall look I mean, up you a... don't really do flowers, but you could. No, yeah. I look up a marigold seller right now and uh, avoid the stamps. Okay. Great. As for a penny, um, I'll ask Alice to help me pick out one. Mm -hmm. Especially. Wow. Yeah. 
That's a word I haven't heard in a really long time. Pinny. Mm, well, it's very old-fashioned. <laughs> Pinafore. Yeah. That's funny. Anyway, you've got a nice one that you, you put on when you bake cakes. That's true. Alice and I have matching one. That's so cool. What's actually on them? Um, well, they have our names and... Oh, gosh, I can't actually remember. I just know that they're like a deep pink colour. I think they have like a baking bowl and a spoon, perhaps, and they have our names. That's cool. Yeah. So I don't need to get another matching a penny because no. I'd have to get one for Alice too. <laughs> yes, you would. The mini Replace penny. Them. The mini penny. That'd be great. <laughs> That's cute. I know. And stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man and that's all i have that's all you have that's all i have okay i like that i mean i'm disturbed by a lot of it but it's, it's certainly interesting yeah i know lots to discuss perhaps everybody can put in the comments what they thought about some of them what was the worst one i've really got to know what everybody thinks of these yeah, yeah. because i uh, i i specifically said to you before don't tell me a lot of these so i can give mm -hmm. you my honest reaction and you did. And I think I have. Uh, yeah. And I I think that I need a hobby that doesn't involve stamps, basically. You need a, a hobby? That doesn't involve stamps. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, need... I think you already have quite a large hobby of music. Yeah, but I can't, you <laughs> can't, rearra I can't rearrange music. I need something that no, I can put true. on my desk that rearranges. Mm-hmm. I don't know what to get. Pokemon cards? I don't know. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> oh, dear. That's really funny. Actually, I was always interested in old coins. I don't have any, but I think old coins are so cool because, you know, they're tactile. They're feelable. And, uh, yeah. I've seen some old coins in the museum a long time I ago. I think Jake has a few coins. Yeah. He's collected. And I think somehow I ended up with a few euro cents in my bag that I mm. found the other day for no reason. I don't know how they get there. It must have been the last time you were in Belgium, no? Yeah, I suspect so. Although it's weird, you know, like these days you kind of feel like you don't get a lot of change. No. Pay everything by card. Yeah, we're more cashless nowadays. Cashless society. But you know, apparently in some places cash is making a comeback. Well, I think, you know, in the last couple of years we've had these times where things have been hacked and stuff and everything's gone down and you can only pay by cash and people are starting to realize that oh actually i'm a bit screwed if i don't have any cash on me at all yeah i went for a long time without having any but now i try to keep like a note or some coins on hand um right now actually i don't have any so i might have to rectify that but yeah that's just one of those things mm. keep some coins or a couple of notes in your bag what i also find is when you depending on where you live you know obviously we live in London so there are a lot of people on the streets um asking for money and it's harder and harder for them to get anything because most people don't carry money yeah um so I have recently tried to always have like you say a few coins just so that I can help you know when asked or or needed because yeah. otherwise it just feels so awful to always say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have anything. Nothing at all. Yeah. So it's harder for people in those situations. This reminds me of a story you told me not long ago about the um, Chris and Rosie podcast, about Rosie teaching their youngest to count. Oh. Do you remember that? Um, it was to do with um, money, and she went to count out pretend coins. And his response was something like, oh, no, mommy, don't do it like that. Tap your card. Yes, it was. Because he's born um, post-COVID when we don't really use cash. And obviously it hasn't started school yet where you learn about, you know, the value of money and counting it and things. So, yeah, they were paying pretend shops and she went to, get, you know, count out coins to give him. And he said, no, 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 you just tap the card. <laughs> So, yeah. so you never really understand change or no. how to round or anything. I feel like that's a skill that might get lost if it's not. Well, I mean, it's still included in maths teaching at school. So for now, they learn it there. But that's really weird mm. to think about that. It's like it's like a whole generation that has sort of almost lost. And that makes me feel old. <laughs> yeah, it does. <sighs> so... Instead of feeling old, I'm going to tell you about a proud moment that I had with Jake the other day. 
not so good is that the power supply in one of the computers we have in the house died and he changed it which was good but in changing it somehow I think we blew up the motherboard and one of the memory sticks um, so I took it to a place down the road and paid 78 British pounds uh, to get it diagnosed it was a waste of money really because all they did was tell us well it's broken and we could fix it for like 400 or something and I was like that's silly this is a, an old machine from like eight years ago I didn't think it was worth quite that. So we went on eBay and Jake found another motherboard. So we bought it from Lithuania, which is interesting. Uh, exactly the same board that we had in the machine. And Jake wants to get into computer building and everything. So he watches a lot of like Nick Gamers Nexus and LTT and all these things. And I watch with him and it's kind of a shared thing we have. So next to music, I've always been into computers and electronic and stuff like that. And uh, I said, well, buy yourself a grounding wrist strap so he did that like six pound or something and i said because before that he had taken apart loads of things he's already taken apart an old xbox one and uh re thermal pasted the cpu on it and the heatsink and he changed out the internal hard disk for an ssd and he did the same with the ps4 um so he's been inside a lot of things and he's even taken apart his own laptop a couple of times to replace the fans so you know I'm letting him have all these experiences. My dad let me have the same experiences, although it was with different hardware back then. Mine was VHS machines and central locking and stuff like that. But I learned so much doing that. And it went on to allow me to build computers and do things. So he's now doing that. But he went one step further than I've ever gone and replaced the entire motherboard in the machine and the power supply as well. And so yesterday he said, it worked. But it didn't work at first. He changed the motherboard and put all the things back in and connected all the switches and buttons to where they needed to be. And he booted up and it didn't boot. And you think, oh boy, that's 110 pounds gone. Turns out actually that one of the memory sticks is dead. Take the memory stick out, one of them, and it happened to be just the right one that wasn't working and it boots. So it's on half the RAM, so he's ordered more RAM. So now, uh, you know, he's got the confidence and he said it's made him feel more confident at doing these very kind of crazy things. And I, I said to him, you know, in 10 years, I want you to look back on this time and uh, really just sort of remember where you got the start, you know, in your bedroom when you got your big shop and all the money rolling in because you're fixing things. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a really cool uh, thing that's happened to us recently. And I'm so proud of him. I really, really but am He's proud. proud of himself. He came to tell me as well before he went to bed last night and he was really pleased. He should be. Yeah. It's brilliant. And I didn't even have to check his work, you know, I didn't check it, all the spaces were done properly or that it was screwed in because I trust him. He really is extremely careful. A lot of kids his age would just sort of plonk it in and hope it worked. Well, it's his passion, isn't it? Computers are his passion. Yeah, he's good at it. Yeah. And he's studying computer science now. He is. I said actually that he should take the old board in and give it to the school because it's broken. It might be something that people have never seen one could look at in person. Because yeah, looking, looking at through YouTube videos or just online is not really hands on. And since this board is very dead and will never work, it doesn't matter what happens to it. I just hope that he gets the chance to tell his computer science teacher all of these things. Because I don't think this is necessarily something that they expect them to be doing. Of course not. So, I, yeah, I just hope that he gets a chance to explain and, you know, really let them know what he's capable of. I really hope so, because it would help them to know his skills. Yeah. And maybe he will be asked or tasked with helping his friends do something similar. Yeah. I wanted to get him like work experience in terabyte electronics down the road at some point when he's allowed to do that. But he's basically gone as far as they probably do anyway. Mm. On his own. Which is even better. And the machine runs well. It runs silently. The fan, the power supply fan was making all these nasty noises before he changed it. So uh, he has a fully working system again. Apart from, a lot, you know, not as much RAM, but that's going to come on Saturday. And then he'll have a machine that is better than it was before it was even broken. Because he's got double the RAM. He's got 16 gig instead of 8. But now he's running on a quarter of that, only 4. So the boy's happy. And rightly so as well. Yeah. And what happened to you the other day? A nice thing as well, which I'm super proud of you for. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds a bit silly compared to... No, it isn't. Jake's accomplishments. Um... So I sometimes visit people's cats when they go on holiday or if they need looking after during the day, whatever it might be. And um, a 
friend recommended me to one of her friends for me to pop in and look after her little cat called Pumpkin, who has a very complicated medical history. Um, And I went to visit her yesterday for the first time, spend a couple of hours with her. And she was the sweetest little cat came, we played, she came, sat on my lap, purring away, fell asleep next to me on the sofa. And I took a few pictures to send to her owner, just so that she knew that, you know, the first visit had gone really well and, um, you know, all was good. And she replied saying that she had never, ever seen Pumpkin um, be like that with anybody except for her and her daughter who lived there. And that I was the cat whisperer. And that has been mentioned a few times. Um, So yeah, it just, it makes me feel very warm and fuzzy (laughs) inside that, you know, I do have a skill. It's an affinity. Yeah. But sometimes I do feel a bit like I'm, you know, you always say that everybody has the one thing that they're really good at. And I think if you aren't working in a particular field or have a particular hobby, which I don't, it can be really difficult to know what is that. Like, I know that I'm a great mum and I'm a great, I don't want to say housewife after what we've just been talking about, but I take care of us. And that's where my joy is, looking after our family. But in terms of something that I'm really good at, I've always really struggled to find that. But I do seem to have a connection with cats, I think. Um, and this was a just... connection. Come on. Ah, brilliant. I love it. Um so yeah, it was just a, it was a really nice moment and really nice to hear from from the owner. Send in all your cat puns. My wife <laughs> is uh, the cat whisperer from Connecticut. Nice. Not Connecticut. No. Connecticut. <laughs> I think that's great. Thank you. And it's something that's not catastrophic. No. <laughs> Any more? No. 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 <laughs> Very good. There you go. A fun episode for today. A bit different. Mm-hmm. Um, We will try and put as many sources for the information that we've read out today in the description. So look out for that if you want to find more of these ridiculous facts. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you. One last thing, if you're still listening after the music has finished, we have one last odd fact. And this is the entire point of today's title. Take it away. From the book called Spells, Charms and Incantations, you may fascinate a woman by giving her a piece of cheese. If a woman is a mouse, then the woman likes cheese. You can fascinate her. But... If the woman is a woman and not a mouse, then why on earth would you be fascinated by cheese? And especially your sister. (laughs) My sister who has an absolute hatred, almost fear of cheese. Yes. I would like her to answer this question, actually. Get her to to text you the response to this post and we can read it out next time because I think that is very, very funny. Okay, I will do. Bye. Bye.